Hello, everybody out there, and welcome to the Zodcast. Jerome, thanks for staying up, my friend. That means a lot. I know. What time is it there? Three, three thirty in the morning in Belgium. I want to come visit there. I'm going to come visit you one day in Belgium, Jerome. That pretty little town you're in that has that. I think it's a Catholic church or something. It's beautiful that I saw pictures of in your town over there. And that would be so cool to visit because I know you're not too far from uh, Bastogne, a uh, famous World War II engagement during the Battle of the Bulge, where Ted Braden was a part of the Battle of the Bulge. Is um, the uh, Battered Bastards of Bastogne. Ted Braden was a member of that clique at age 16 and got a uh, two Bronze Stars from fighting at age 16. So that's what I think of when I think of Belgium. I think of uh, Ted Braden unleashing hell on the Nazis and you couldn't unleash anything worse on the Nazis than Ted Braden. <laughs> so I'm going to, I'm practicing my new intro and I'm going to play with this a little bit, but here it goes coming to you from somewhere off planet from the ether and into the ethernet. We are now in the twilight of retrograde and it's now time for the Zodcast. My name is Drew Beeson, your guide to the Zodcast galaxy and welcome everyone. Uh, Lisa, you made a yes, Ted. I'm glad I gave a shout out to Ted with you being on, Lisa. But Jerome, you're not too far from Bastogne. You're not. I remember looking it up on the map, and there's a, I think I met a guy that does um, like battlefield tours uh, in, in Belgium of, of a lot of those World War II sites. And I met him online, and he's uh, like a big student of uh, the uh, 501st, 502nd, all the parachute infantry regiments, like. Um, Band of Brothers unit. I think the Band of Brothers was uh, 506. Of course, E Company, Easy Company. And then Braden was uh, 2nd Battalion, 501st. E Company also was called Easy Company. It was Braden's unit in um, World War II. Of course, uh, Braden missed D-Day, but he made it in time for uh, for Bastogne and all those battles. Yeah, you're not. You're not. You're not far from there at all. And I, I saw the other day, It was. I think it was in Belgium. It just perfectly. No, I, actually, it was a... Uh, not World War II, but it was a World War I trench that had been perfectly preserved or like, like re, you know, I don't know either preserved or they uh, refurbished it or whatever, but it was exactly how it looked. I think it was in Belgium, uh, a World War I trench. And I mean, I would have loved to go in there. I would love to go check out a World War I trench because I'll eat World War I stuff too. Uh, I think mainly I'm into like World War II in Vietnam, but uh, World War I is also really cool. And makes me think of that movie, that great movie about World War One. And somebody knows what I'm talking about. Yeah, Belgium is a little country. I'd love to go to Belgium, really. Hey, Darnell, there's your shout out. I might give you another one. There's my sister. She says, let's go. It's, let's get the show on the road. I didn't know that, Tony. Warren Spahn. A pitcher who won 363 games after the war, fought and was wounded at the Battle of the Bulge. I didn't know that. I love old baseball trivia, by the way. I love old baseball trivia, and I didn't know that. Who named that movie The Lost Battalion with Ricky Schroeder? That is the greatest World War I movie ever made. I don't think anything touches it. Nothing touches it. Sorry. that's. I mean, it's on YouTube. Go check it out. That's a great movie, The Lost Battalion. It's uh, what was that other movie, the big one that came out um, not long ago that was in the theaters that had all that media behind it and I went and saw it and it was flat. The story was flat. I mean, the visuals were great, but the story was just flat. I mean, the Lost Battalion was made on probably a 20th of what that movie was. And uh, the Lost Battalion is just a better story, how they get trapped back there. Not Dunkirk. Dunkirk's a good movie. That wasn't bad. Dunkirk wasn't bad. What was it? What was it called? Uh, what's the big World War One movie? Not the one on Netflix. That was just a remake. But uh, can't remember. Whatever was it? Nineteen Seventeen or what? Whatever it was. The date. Lost Battalion is awesome. That's just a good. That's a great story. Nineteen Seventeen. Yep, you're right. Nineteen Seventeen. That that was the visuals were great in that movie, but the story was lame. I mean. They're fighting to get back to the lines and they're going to make it or whatever. But, you know, the scenes were awesome. I mean, the, the uniforms and the biplane scene where the biplane crashes in 1917 was great. And the actors were great. It's just the story was terrible. I mean, Lost Battalion is, uh, yeah, Dunkirk is great, too. All Quiet on the Ruster Fund. Yeah, that, that's what was remade on Netflix. That's a great movie, too. But 
Lost Battalion is going to have to take the cake for, for me, for World War One. I. I just thought it was that good. Yeah, it was. The story's weak. They had everything going for it but a story. You're not far from a city that was home to a lot of the battalion soldiers. Cool. That'd be cool. I'd love to go. Or was it the, uh, what was it named? The um, Argonne Forest in Lost Battalion? The Argonne? Yes. Let's go to Belgium. You have, that's one place you haven't been yet, Jen. You've been everywhere in the world twice, but you have not been Belgium. Or maybe you haven't. I don't know. <laughs> You've been to a lot of places. I don't know. But um, you should put Belgium on your list. And I know a guy there who could show you around a little bit. I think he's in southern Belgium. But Jerome's not near Brussels. He's more to the south. If I remember, Jerome, you're more south. Southwest. No, southeast. Southeast part of Belgium. But it's not that big. So I don't know. You're probably a... Jerome, you're probably, what, a three-hour drive from um, from Brussels? Okay, Darnell. Drew, do you think the Zodiac lived long enough to see the early days of YouTube? Um, maybe. If so, do you think he ever watched any of the videos that people made about him? I don't know. I wonder if he ever watched one called His Name Was Arthur Lee Allen, but I don't know how long that's been on YouTube. He might have been, let's see, 2009. What was good? <laughs> I'm not showing any hints there of who the Zodiac was, am I, Darnell? I think Zodiac, uh, I think the creator of the Zodiac persona slipped away in 2009. Yeah, Dennis, I agree. The 1917 story was weak. It was filmed in one continuous shot and it made it like a video game. Yeah, that's part of the problem too. I mean, it was beautifully shot, but it was that one. Could, yeah, that's that's part of the thing. I mean, remember how they, they pushed that movie too. I mean, they just pushed it. I think they actually bought some awards because they, they had put so much work into it. But, like, who could have let that go? The story was weak. You know, the actors were good. The, the, all the costumes and shooting that. I doubt it. I mean, I'd be st stunned if that movie recovered its its budget. Which, I mean, I was hoping it would be good. I mean, I love World War I stuff, but it just wasn't. Hey, Searcher. Okay, let me uh, get to the slides. Oh, and Tony, I'm going to mention your thing, too. Oh, and Jerome. I, I still don't hear from people that, that are baffled or, like, Impressed by your find with uh, Panzarella's kid. Oh, that's good to know, Tony. YouTube was created on... See, everybody knows everything here. YouTube was created on February 14th, 2005. So, I mean, he might have caught part of it, but I don't know when the... Uh, the uh, His name was Arthur Lee Allen was uh, added. So, I'm going to get back into this. Well, that's definitely getting part of it. But, okay, we're going to do a, a little bit a, a fast trivia. Who can name this person? See, I'll, this shouldn't take but three seconds. No one, no guesses? Wow, box office was $385 million. They must have really, that's a, well, then it did make its money back. I doubt it cost that much to make. That's amazing. I think I, they probably spent a lot of marketing, but it must have been profitable at $385 million. No one knows who this is? We're just going to have to come back to it. Going once, going twice. No one knows who's on the screen. That's funny. We'll come back to it. So uh, let me go back up here. I want to see if somebody joined us. Hey, Ross. Of course, I already read your question, Ross, so you knew I knew you were here. And if, right, if you didn't catch it, go check out Ross's last show with uh, Manny Grossman. It was really good. I know your first one. I, I know exactly what happened to you, Ross, on that first show with Manny. It's something with StreamYard. Like it shows you two streams, I think, and you were and you were trying to delete your old one, and out of StreamYard, I bet, and it shows you two. Like you were trying to delete that one, that first one that didn't that didn't go right because you didn't have good audio with Manny, and then you deleted your show, your your regular show is what happened because I did that before. And I bet that's exactly what happened to you. Like it shows you two and you delete one and they're both gone. It's it's I think that was a stream yard deal, man. Uh, but you but Ross Reed did that show with Manny Grossman. So go check it out on Planet X Filmworks. Hey, Sefer, how are you? Yeah, Mike. Is Mike the first one to get it right? Mike nailed it. That's Ned. That is Ned from BBOR. I don't remember why I had that picture. I think I, I did a show with Ned a while back and I was looking for a picture of him for the thing. And I ran and I found that somewhere. There's, I don't know where I stole that, Ned. So I don't know where I got it, but Mike, Mike, uh, Mike nailed it. 
Mike knew exactly where that's from or uh, knew who it was. That's Ned. And I'm thinking about, I want to do a uh, shoot. I want to do a show with Ned. I know we should probably do Zodiac because we both do Zodiac stuff, but I actually want to do it on uh, the Missy Beavers case. I've been getting into that case again. Uh, Missy Beavers, the lady that was uh, murdered in Texas about, God, when, when was that? That was um, 2017, maybe, Missy Beavers. Uh, looks like a young Tom Selleck. Look at that, Ned. You just got a huge compliment, man. Um, how old is Ned there? I, I'm gonna get I'm only I can only guess. I'm gonna say he's like 16. Yeah, Ned's awesome. That's a good friend. Ned's been a big supporter of mine for a long time, and I'm a big supporter of Ned's. But the first time I heard someone say my name, like another YouTuber say my name that I didn't know was Ned. I remember he did a show, he was talking about Cheney or something, and it was talking about me favorably, of course, because we are friends. But um, but it was Ned's show, it was BBOR. Yes, Ned's books are great. Check out Ned's books on Amazon. Uh, Killer on a White Horse is the first. That's a great book. Uh, Killer on a White Horse. It's a it's an awesome read. It's good suspense. You won't honestly. I mean this. You won't be able to put that book down. It's fiction, um, but it's you won't be able to put it down. And I'm not a big fiction reader, but that's a really good book. So uh, definitely want to check out Killer on a White Horse from Ned to Hell on, on Amazon. But yeah, Ned, if you're listening, I want to do a Missy Beaver show because Ned. That's one of the cases Ned follows, the Missy Missy Beavers case. But yes, that is Ned. So anyway, uh, I want to bring up another YouTuber who I know, who I don't see on here yet, but it's Anthony R.R. Mills of the Anthony R.R. Mills Show. And Anthony got on my radar because he started doing um, some D.B. Cooper videos when they found the, uh, the antimony or they were talking about the antimony on uh, the, the, the rare metal on D.B. Cooper's tie. Anthony did some videos on that and they went around the... Uh, the vortex, as we call it in DB Cooper world. And that's how Anthony got on my radar. And he does a lot of financial videos and some stuff on Coda Arms and stuff like that. I'm totally into like heraldry and Coda Arms. I like, I know the Beast and Coda Arms well. There's six Bs on it. And uh, I used to be able to describe exactly how the Beast and Coda Arms is based in Cheshire, England. So he does a lot of that. I love that stuff. But anyway, Anthony did a Zodiac show talking about the, the logo that we, we talk about here a lot. And go check it out. It's Anthony R.R. Mill Show. I'll put a link there later or when this, this video uploads or actually I'll do it through StreamYard. But anyway, go check it out on Anthony's channel. And one thing that Andy, Anthony found on his own was uh, the weather symbols relating to the that symbol that you see in the, the Zodiac's Halloween card. And, of course, it's on um, – I didn't even put the, I didn't even put the, the uh, Halloween card on here yet. But we'll get to the rest of it. But, you know, the symbol, the one there that shows up on the Halloween card, and it was also on the Pines card cover, that same uh, Zodiac logo that has the four dots. Anyway, Anthony covered it, and he was on his own found this. That's why I think it's interesting, because he found it on his own, independent of me, uh, how the symbols of the weather. Like here, you see these are called octas. And uh, I think it's one octa, two octa, but it's basically showing the wind. And he just covered that on his channel and found it on his own. But I found the same thing three years ago. Not trying to upstage Anthony, but I, I have a video up here. And this is where these screenshots came from, where I talked about it three years ago. Some of you people might remember out there in the Comdroon. But I thought that that may have come from that as well. And the reason I did was, and the way I found it, was that Don Cheney had some classes studying this stuff at Bakersfield Junior College. And I only knew that because... They were presenting it at the uh, Kern County Fair in Bakersfield while he was going to Bakersfield Junior College. And this was after Paul Avery already left, by the way. But he was studying the weather patterns and, and weather symbols. And they said the books they were looking out of, they used a Kern County uh, weather report. And uh, that's what made me go look at the weather symbols because I knew he was exposed to that at minimum in that class at Bakersfield Junior College, but also when he was a trained to be a navigator in the Air Force for two years in Har Harlingen. So uh, what these things mean is uh, the octas are actually cloud cover. And those are these round balls that are filled in. That looks kind of like the Zodiac symbols, a lot of them. And they used to think that maybe these came from uh, booze balls from like the booze Allen company. But I think that came a little later. But I also speculated that maybe that's where some of these balls uh, come from. And this, this is a, uh, which they mean cloud cover. And I think uh, the, the dots over here, there's three dots. Remember, there's four dots around that symbol on the Halloween card. But uh, that means rain. 
So I don't know. But Anthony found it on his own thinking. Maybe that's – he didn't say for sure, neither do I, but that some of this stuff comes from the weather. So I'll uh, repost uh, – I'll put a link to Anthony's channel uh, in the comments and a link to where I covered this three years ago. But I think it was pretty interesting that he found it on his own. It's thinking that, hey, this looks more like the – origin of that symbol than anything else I, I really believe that i mean we talk about it coming from so many other places and it's been speculated on forever and we're going to keep speculating on it as long as this channel's on we're going to speculate till the cows come home literally uh where the you know what may have influenced the zodiac to come up with that symbol and i think it, i think it probably is something like this and then maybe some of the other things also reinforced it like the uh symbol from the flying vf bar Right there, you see on the cattle, and that's from um, that's Red Rider. I'm pretty sure, not Tim Holt, but Red Rider. But but Red Rider comics go right in with Tim Holt. And see, here's a cow, and you'll see this if you look up the Wikipedia on the Zodiac Halloween card. You'll see this too, where they have uh, that actual brand. I think this cow was somewhere, wasn't in California? No, actually, I think this one might have been in California. I don't remember at a ranch called the Big Dipper, or the Dipper, or something like that. But after the Big Dipper, because that symbol. Uh, kind of mimics the Big Dipper. So then you get back into celestial navigation that we talk about a lot on this channel. And maybe Zodiac was influenced by celestial navigation, which, you know, I believe. Uh, and so do some others like Stefan. And uh, of course, Michael Cole believes there's celestial navigation going on in the Zodiac uh, world like I do. But they, they uh, it's actually called the Dipper Ranch or the Big Dipper. But I think that symbol also has something to do with the Big Dipper. And then you see the actual cattle brand. And I think uh, Anthony actually goes over that in some of his, part of his video where he's looking at different cattle brands, but he doesn't think it's from there. But his most likely conclusion, I think, was the weather stuff. Back to this, the weather stuff, the octas, the cloud cover, the rain, these different symbols. Uh, that's my bit. That's my best bet is where that symbol comes from. And you see over here on the right, the uh, these are the wind and knots where you'll see that you know, the shorter F, I don't know why it keeps clicking over here. I'm just clicking. That's what I get for putting all the slides together. But uh, you'll see the F where it has the shorter line coming out of it there and the longer one that looks a little more like uh, the one the Zodiac drew and then some of the balls. But, but, but that's, again, going back to the weather, but I'll put a link to both videos. And uh, see, look at that long advertisement I gave you, Ned. Now you're going to have to come on and we're going to have to talk a little, um, a little true crime. Just screwed that up. Let me get back. Uh oh, the lights just blinked for some reason. Hey, Keith, how are you? Good seeing Keith, Steve. Always good seeing Steve. Steve's always usually early. You weren't early today, Steve. Ned is 34. He's 34 now. He wasn't 34 in that picture, Jerome. That's still young. Ooh, I like I like questions like this. Uh, do you think Evan from Texas will be open to podcasts with you? I haven't talked to him in a long time. He he only out on those two vids, but he did a great job. Would love to hear more from him. I, Evan is a great guy. He's a great guy. I don't know him that well, but um, we communicated for a while through email. And actually, I did one show with him. What, what, what didn't uh, was that with you, Ross? I don't remember. What's that one show we did with Evan and I think Ned, maybe Ross and Professor Horan? We did somebody's show, I think it was Ross's show, or was it Ned? I don't even remember, but Evan was part of that, was part of that show. He's a really nice guy, but he he likes to lay low, he really does. He likes to lay low, he does live in Texas, I know that. But uh, I think he had some some crazies kind of kind of bother him a little bit. So he likes to like stay anonymous. But he is a really nice guy. Yeah. Yeah. If Evan's out there, if Evan, you're still listening to to this show, I'd love to hear from you. But I do have his email. I do have his email from back uh, maybe a couple of years ago. But hopefully Evan was excited because, of course, Evan did backup research to the hoax theory for Professor Horan and kind of took it to a new level. I mean, what Evan was going to set out to do is kind of debunk it, you know, I mean, not on his face, but kind of see if he could debunk it. 
and he couldn't. He wound up being an advocate for the hoax theory. So he was a great help to uh, Professor Horan and, you know, being this younger guy who was doing great research and, and backing up the theory. So I hope Evan was uh, excited to see the um, Peacock show come out and and given the hoax theory it's due i mean i think it got a, a, a definitely got a uh it definitely got put out there for sure so hopefully he's still out there following it i'm sure that made him happy to see that suffer i think the symbol is a cipher of the name don because you can see the n underneath the symbol and also same thing at the back of the card symbol and n beside it draw that up for me suffer that'd look cool it looks like the Vanity Fair clothing manufacturing logo, VF Corporation. Could be. I mean, inspiration could have come from anywhere. Yeah, that has that has been around for years. I think it could be. You keep thinking Gajkowski when you see the cow. Gajkowski. <laughs> I love plays on words. That's a good one, Chris. That's the best one you've had in a, in, a, in a while, and you've had some good ones, but that's pretty funny. Oh, thanks, Patty. There's the, a link to Anthony's channel. So check out that. If you if you hit that link in the live stream, it'll take you to Anthony's channel. Hit subscribe. Check out that video. Give it a like. The one about the Zodiac Halloween card. I'm sure he'll do. He's going to do some more Zodiac in the future. I know he is because he said he would before. And hopefully he does some great D.B. Cooper videos. And I know he's got one coming out saying, I'm sorry, Drew, that I ever doubted Ted Braden was D.B. Cooper. Will be a future one coming out from Anthony. I mean, Butterfield, I don't know, like Butterfield said, he, what do you say, he's like uh, debating a ham sandwich or whatever, but, and I like Butterfield, I do. Uh, uh, he gave me two really fair interviews. He's not a big believer in Cheney or Allen, but I think I moved him a little bit on Cheney, that second interview I had with Butterfield on House of Mystery. That should be on YouTube somewhere. If you if you look at uh, House of Mystery and my name, you might find that interview or or one or, one or both. But I think I moved Butterfield on that last one a little bit because I just went really over the top. But Butterfield is, you know, he's he's made the he's Butterfield is a facts guy. I mean, he's all about facts, 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 facts. That's why his website is zodiackillerfacts.com. So that's his thing, and that and that's cool because we need something like that, especially after all the gray smithing that was done. And that's something Horan did too is help uh, demystify gray smith. And I want to get into that too. Now that I'm thinking about gray smith, so thanks for that. Uh, Darnell, but uh, yeah, it's like he said in the video, he's like debating a ham sandwich because it's hard to because there's so many different attachments to it. But anyway, but the hoax theory has its has its uh, place in, a, in an over 50 year old unsolved case. I've always said that uh, I don't need to defend it because, you know, it's like Horn says in Myth the Zodiac Killer, none of the crimes can truly be linked together by physical evidence at all. The ballistics don't match. None of the fingerprints from Paul Stein's cab match the Napa pay phone, unfortunately. You cannot say with a thousand percent uh, confidence that any two Zodiac crimes are 100 percent the same person. That's why I did that challenge question the other day was if you could go back in time and see who the killer was, which one would you choose? That's really the, the genesis of that asking that question, because. You can't say, I can't say 100%. Yeah, I think Cheney created the Zodiac persona. I really do. I'm a big believer in that. But I can't say he was the attacker at all four canonical crimes. We'll never know. I think there's a high probability that it could have been one or one or another attackers at maybe Lake Herman Road. That could have been, that, that might not have even been Zodiac. Yeah, he took credit for it. It's close to Blue Rock Springs, but why the long period between Lake Herman Road and Blue Rock? I mean, we're, we're just never going to know for sure. You think Zodiac was pulling a punt on us and he moved and retired to Paradise, California? He might have, but it's not the, if it was that spelling of Paradise, of course, Stephen, maybe so, but Paradise, California is the original spelling, not the rare spelling of D-I-C-E, because we know that's Don's relatives. Paradise, D-I-C-E. Okay, let me go to this next slide. So I was talking about earlier the symbol. I think that was on the outside of the Pines card cover, but you have peeked through the Pines card received by the San Francisco Chronicle on March 22nd, 1971. Of course, you have here Sierra Club. Um, and this was from the, um, whatever that development was in in, uh, in Nevada. 
I can't even remember. But uh, anyway, it made me think of some more Grace Smith that I'm going to read. But anyway, the Phillips 66 map, which, of course, was a piece of a Phillips 66. Of course, the the uh, gas oil company had roadmaps back in the day. And the Zodiac used a California issue Phillips 66 map, which he cut out part of that he sent in with the button letter that showed the peak of Mount Diablo. And of course it had the cross circle over Mount Diablo and uh, the magnetic North and all that, as we know about one of the points that was shown on that particular map that came with it was the devil's post pile. And that was a place that was important to Don Cheney. He liked the mountains. He liked hunting in the mountains. He liked national parks. He, he honeymooned at the devil's post pile national monument. That's part of the Sierras. And, uh, I point that out in my book. People that read my book know about this. So anyway, this was an old, uh, I got to blow this up so I can read it. So hold on a second. This was an old, you'll see these, these snapshots from the old Zodiac forum back in 2017. And this is from Tahoe 27. Of course, everybody knows that's uh, Misty Johansson. One of the, I think one of the best all time online Zodiac killer researchers is not the best. I mean, she really dug in. I think she's probably taking a break. Maybe she's still out there. I don't know. But uh, Misty Johansson is great. And they're talking about uh, Mount Diablo map and they're talking about the different things about it. And she's talking to somebody called Soze and it says, um, here somebody actually brings this up and I can't, it's, let me, let me go back. Cause I still have Steven's comment up here and let me blow this up again. So at the bottom of this, right, when you see somebody actually brings up this, Susie says, um, here on Saturday, November 18th, 2017, it says Devil's Post Pile National Monument is in that area near num uh, area near number four. So this was the points of interest that came pre-printed on the Zodiac Philip 66 math or, the, you know, you get these anywhere. They weren't that uncommon. I'm not saying they were, but one of the points of interest on it was the Devil's Post Pile National Monument. And here this person is bringing this up, this uh, Capricorn poster. People might know who that is if you've been in the Zodiac for longer than I have. But it says, those holes may have been made by Zodiac himself if he tacked the map to a bulletin board he owned. And what I don't know here, and I don't know, I think I may have asked Richard Grinnell before, and he didn't remember or know. And Richard, if you're listening to this, let me know. Email me tomorrow because I know you sometimes you watch it. Um, because I know it's pretty late in England too, but if you watch it, it was interesting to know if, because I think there was only a section that the Zodiac mailed in of the map with the button letter. But I always wondered if this person was alluding to if part of this original map, and this may be on the back because of course the one he mailed in with the one that showed uh, Concord and Mount Diablo was the Bay area a little wider out, but maybe this was on the flip side because the map was two sided. But I always wondered if, it had a tack hole on devil's post pile, meaning this is somewhere I wanted to visit or somewhere I visited just marking up. People used to mark on maps where they wanted to go or travel to either where they had been or where they were going to go. So I was always wondering if anyone ever figured out that did that piece of map have a, I don't see one with this. And this is part of the original map where devil's post pile is. Is there a pinhole there? And did the police get it with a pinhole in devil's post pile? Because I'm not reaching for straws, but if that original piece of the map came with a hole in the devil's post pile, ding, 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 because that's that was an important spot for Cheney. That's where he got – that's where he spent his honeymoon at Devil's Post Pile National Monument. So I always wondered that. I don't know where this Capricorn gets this again, but I'll read it again. Devil's Post Pile National Monument is in that area near number four, and it is. You see the map right here. Those holes may have been made by Zodiac himself if he tacked the map to a bulletin board he owned. Now, we don't know if the cops got this piece of it and they tacked it to a board. Who knows? We'll probably never know. But if that map came with a hole in Devil's Post Pile, I want to know about it. Um, yes, there was a Paradise Motel. You know, that's right, Tony. There was a Paradise Motel, South Lake Tahoe. Five-minute walk from Heavenly Village. Oh, it was Incline Village is what I'm thinking of. Incline Village is where the... the uh, is that little place in the background there? That's Incline Village, where they made what Zodiac made that card out of. It was an ad for the Incline Village, and I think Ralph Spinelli actually had a. You know, if you want to totally get off the rails, 
Spinelli had a place in Incline Village. Remember that ad I put up with Spinelli where he's like the uh, the guy at casinos that gets the party, the big parties in or whatever? I think later on Spinelli does have a place in Incline Village. So that's just, that's probably a synchronicity, but it's interesting. Yes, the Devil's Post Ball is such a romantic honeymoon spot. That is where Chaney honeymoon. It's a fact. And there's a picture of the Devil's Post Ball, by the way. This is, um, it was formed, I don't know, thousands of years ago from, they're called basalt columns, and it was made from like heavy fire and ice back in the day. It made these rock uh, columns that were forged out of the, you know, the heavy ice and then uh, the heat that came later and it, and it created this. I think it's like the only one like it in the world where you have these, own, they're almost 60 feet tall, these rock columns that look like, they look like kind of like trees together, but they're called, I think they're called basalt columns. But there you see number four, Devil's Post Pile. It does look like a little pinhole right there where somebody may have said, I've been here on my honeymoon. Um, you know, Ray Davis could have been. We need, to, uh, we need to do a deep dive on that again. But, of course, Ross did a great deep, deep dive on the Ray Davis murder. Cops could have pinned it on the board. Absolutely, Dennis. They, they could have. But if one of those pin marks hit that spot, I would wonder. <laughs> Chris said, my, my thoughts exactly. Your wife would not have gone with you if you went to the devil's post pile. That's where they went. Was there one on that? I think, that, I think, I can't remember that one. I cannot remember that particular one. Let me see. But think about it. Why, like Mount Diablo, D Diablo's devil. Anybody know where this, this devil comes from? It's in the trivia question number two. But anyway, uh, devil's post pile. I think it was called, uh, I can't remember originally. It was always devil. Devil, po I might have been like plural, but and then they changed it to devil's post pile from like post piles or something like that. But of course, Mount Diablo is what, you know, Diablo is devil. So I know there's a lot of different mountains and stuff that have uh, Diablo or, uh, or Devil's Triangle, like Close Encounters, but there's not a whole lot, but remember that. Mount Diablo is definitely Devil, and so is Devil's Post Pile. See? He said he would do a, a, an Eastern Sierras for a honeymoon. That place is amazing. I'd love to go. I'd love to check it out. I would love it. I would love to go there, definitely. I never heard that. Wasn't there some dentist that claimed to have met the Zodiac in Mexico at dentistry school? I don't know. I haven't heard that, but there's a piece I don't want to forget. No one knows where that guy's from right there. <laughs> Is it Ned again? <laughs> Tony. <laughs> That's funny. <laughs> okay. He said it, Ned, not me. That's Tony. Yes. Jerome knew it. It's Tenacious D. Pick a destiny. Yeah, Kyle Gass, Jack Black. That is, that is the devil from uh, Pick a Destiny from Tenacious D. I, I love that. That is like the funniest. That is like one of the, the funniest band ever is Tenacious D. Okay, let me go back to this real quick. And I'm going to, you see your picture there, Tony, but I'm going to go back to uh, this for Devil's Post Pile. And this this is interesting. This is a this is a message that was left. This is also from 2017 on another Zodiac Killer message board. And he says, I believe we've been holding the Phillips map the wrong way. In physics, the North Magnetic Pole is actually the South Pole of the Earth mag Earth's magnetic field. All magnets, which is what a compass is, have a red colored and that points north. The opposite poles of two magnets attract. Therefore, when the red the, the red end of a magnet or compass is pointing north, it is because it is being attracted in that direction by the south end of the magnet, which is colored blue. I agree with that. Zodiac wrote, Zodiac wrote set to magnetic north and blue. So I turned the map upside down and the outline of the San Francisco Bay 
and the portion of Marion County remind me of the skeleton in the Halloween card. This is where some people were taking that portion of the Bay Area from the Phillips 66 map that was sent in with the button letter, and they were superimposing the one of the skeletons from the Halloween card. And then someone else brought this up, and this was something that I think this is, is in Gray Smith Zodiac. It's either Zodiac or Zodiac on Mask. I think it's Zodiac, and I don't remember what page, but Gray Smith's book. And I know you got to take everything from Gray Smith with a grain of salt, but it says June 26, 1970, Friday, single step stamp Zodiac envelope, postmark San Francisco, California, uh, 26 a.m., 1979, uh, to the San Francisco Chronicle, and closed the torn. Enclosed, enclosed a torn portion of a Phillips 66 roadmap, FBI specimen QC-51 and Q-90. Darlene Farron's first husband was named Phillips. Of course, James Phillips, Crabtree, James Crabtree Phillips, whatever. the They should have asked him that when, they, when, uh, when Andrew Knock was interviewing him for our documentary that we were in. Uh, how does your name actually go? Is it Phillips on the front or the back, dude? But anyway, it was a that was an interesting part of the documentary. But that's pretty interesting. Of course, his name was Phillips, and so was the map. It says, with a single line of crypto, Phillips 66 roadmap had symbols indicating Contra Costa County. Of course, that's where uh, Mount Diablo is. I mean, not uh, yeah, Mount Diablo is, and specifically Mount Diablo, aka Satan's Mountain. Let's go back to Satan. Okay, sorry, Ned, you're not Satan. <laughs> According to Tony, you are. <laughs> uh, oh, that's so funny. Uh, okay, Mount Diablo, a.k.a. Satan's Mountain. The killer now claimed 12 victims. The back of the Zodiac's map has never been reproduced in print. And contains a visual clue linking the killer to his earliest murderer near Santa Barbara. Of course, we're talking about Santa Barbara. We're talking about uh, the Domingos Edwards murders at Gaviota Beach. And so I thought that was interesting. Okay, visual clue to the killer. So this they're talking about the backside of the Phillips 66 part of the map that was sent in with the Zodiac button letter. And it says, uh, earliest murder scene near Santa Barbara. Envelope to Zodiac's letter of June 26, 1970, which was the date of the button letter, which contained the threat to, to punish them if they did not comply by uh, annihilating a full school bus of kids, blah, blah, blah. We know the rest of it. But that's interesting that, that Grace Smith is throwing this clue out, claiming there's a clue to maybe the Gaviota beach murders. Ross, I don't know if you've ever heard this before, but it could be on the flip side of that. Now, remember you cannot write off everything that Robert Graysmith said, you know why? Because who was advising Graysmith the most, who was advising him the most, who was giving Graysmith the, uh, the golden eggs, Don Cheney. That is who gave Graysmith his fortune. Donald Lee Cheney, you would not know of this case as well as you do if it's not for Donald Lee Cheney because Gray Smith has no book if he has no Arthur Lee Allen. And who's telling you, who's giving you all the goods on Arthur Lee Allen that, that made the book Zodiac? Don Cheney is. He's the one that came forward and said, my buddy this, my buddy told me that. He told me this, my buddy had a Zodiac watch. He told me he was going to kill couples on lover's lanes. He was the goose that laid Gray Smith's golden egg. So you don't know what else Cheney's telling you. You don't, he could be telling you some real stuff and you, and he does it under this cryptic, whatever, like, Hey, there could be stuff on the back that alludes to this other murder that happened in 1963 being, uh, Bobby Edwards and Linda Dominguez that were killed on Gaviota beach, which I think of all the non-canonicals, I don't know if Ross would agree because he's my non-canonical guy, but I would say of all of them, even Ray Davis, which I think needs another look, I would say Gaviota is one that's most Zodiac like because it's so much like Berryessa, and he also used a 22 long rifle ammo. But you have to take some of the race Smith stuff seriously because you got to remember Cheney's the one giving him all this stuff. So as me believer believing that Cheney's the one that created the Zodiac persona, some of those clues to Gray Smith might be legit. Is all I'm saying. So it's interesting that he writes that in the book. So for if Zodiac had killed anybody else, he would have mentioned it. On the car door. Well, maybe that was under a different though. Maybe he creates Zodiac for Lake Herman Road. But that's true. That's a good point. Um, 
A lot of people believe that. They think that the non the uh, canonical crimes are the only four. And but maybe that was the birth of the zodiac, though. The birth of the zodiac was like Herman Road, and that stuff was done prior. But that's true. He never took credit in any of the letters for. Well, he did take credit. Try to take credit for Sherry Joe Bates with. You see how you stumbled upon my Riverside activity. Of course, he took credit for Kathleen Johns. Uh, I don't think Bates was Zodiac, but he was known to take credit for stuff he didn't do. But you think he would, Suffer. You think he would. But I don't know. Gaviota is a hard one for me to shake. I really, I really don't understand that. Mount Diablo, original native Indian name. I can't even pronounce that. Dawn of Time. That's pretty cool. But yeah, Devil's Post Pile. Philip 666. Yes. <laughs> there you go, Chris. It's all coming together. For sure. Okay, I want to I don't want to forget to do. Wait, Tony. This is Tony's find. I blow it up. My eyes are getting bad. Henry Cheney Hammer Company produces hammers and wrenches and has been using the Cheney name since 1836. Cheney Hammers and Cheney Wrenches. The Allen Wrench and the Cheney Pipe Wrench. Just saying. That's a good find, Tony. I don't take any of it for granted. You got the wrench and the pipe. That could be, the, yeah, the, the wrench. Okay, are you saying, Tony, are you saying the wrench looks like the right side of that, that VF symbol? Because that could be it. You know, you could turn the wrench over and the Allen, the Allen Wrench or the Allen Key and then the Cheney wrench would give you that symbol. So there you have Cheney and Allen together. So I don't know if you were saying that too, but that's interesting, Tony. Really, you could with the wrench you show the Cheney wrench and the Allen key or wrench, depending on what country you're in, could make up our little logo. Yeah, Tony says yes. That's interesting. No, I think there's something there. I was looking again at Blaze Star's analysis of the Halloween card. And I think she's got a video on YouTube, but she's got a blog spot. If you look up Blaze Star, I mentioned her in my book and her deep, deep analysis of the Zodiac's Halloween card. And I think she probably gets a lot of that right because she spent who knows crazy hours really diving into it and the different names she gets out of it and the, and the different stuff that comes out of it. And she's talking about different names. One of the names that she got out of the Halloween card is Frank. and. Um, and I was thinking, Frank, well, Cheney's relative is Frank Paradise through through a marriage, but Cheney's related to Frank Paradise, the architect. So that's one of the names. And then she comes up with the name Bannon a lot. But Frank Paradise lived in Bannock County in Idaho. So there's more to that there, but it's talking about more about that symbol. And I don't know. I think there's some stuff that, that people should check out with Blaze Stars Halloween card interpretation. But uh, that's a great find, Tony. It really is. Because, but what, where I was going with Blaze Star is, is that she believed that the there's two, of course, there's two different skeletons in the Halloween card. There's the one that was pre printed, and then there was the skeleton that's the one on the outside, and then the skeleton that's on the inside. And I know there's some debate if the Zodiac drew that. And most people think, like Sean, my friend Sean, who's a graphic artist, thinks that he just found it from another uh, set of Halloween stuff and he cut it out and he pasted it on the inside of the card. But what Blaze always said was that she thinks that that means there was two suspects, two people participating in the crime. She thinks that were represented by those two skeletons, the one on the front and the one on the inside are two, two different people. Uh, just like this one with Tony, you got the Cheney, the Cheney pipe wrench and the Allen wrench slash key. That need, that's a good find, Tony. It's a really good find. That might actually be even better than my favorite that you found, Tony, which is Patter Ned. Patter Ned. Of course, Father Ned. Not that Ned. And not that Ned. <laughs> but Patter Ned. Father Ned. Yes, Don Cheney's father's name was Ned. Except for Zodiac Guild, anybody else? Yeah, I read that. Sorry. Yeah, he would have wrote on the whole car. True. Who was asking about the, uh, somebody was asking about the car door at Barry S. If anyone ever touched it, you know, they did. They have some like cardboard or something taped over where the Zodiac wrote. 
uh, the dates of all the other crimes. And it's still, you've seen pictures of it. It's still in the police station in Napa and the warehouse up kind of high. And I know when they were filming the movie Zodiac or, or uh, this is a Zodiac speaking documentary that I think Brian Hartnell tried to touch it or just kind of go near it. And they like barked at him for almost touching it. And they were like, dude, that's my car door you took. I'll touch it if I damn well, please. I thought it was funny. If you remember that, I was part of a, I think that's in the, this is the Zodiac speaking where Hartnell tries to touch his own car door and they barked at him. I was, I thought it was funny anyway. Let me go back here. David Gold is the dentist who claimed to meet Zodiac. Oh, that's not David Gold. Yes, that's David, David Gold. Uh, yeah, he's the guy that thinks the Zodiac is D.B. Cooper and the the uh, Anglin brothers and Frank Morris. Are, they're all tied in together. Uh, David Gold. I don't know David. I've never corresponded with him. I think Ned knows him, going back to Ned. But uh, I think from what I heard, David is in South Texas somewhere. I think he might be in, uh, shoot, somewhere down in South Texas, not Harlingen. Wouldn't that be weird if he was in Harlingen? <laughs> but I think David Gold is down there. I don't even know if David Gold believes all that. But I think, not to get off subject, but I think the uh, the guys made it out of Alcatraz. I think they I think they swam it and got out. And you've seen that picture that supposedly the Ang Anglin brothers down in uh, South America somewhere. Where is it? Not Brazil, but... Uh, Wherever that is, where they show the two guys and they're wearing sunglasses and somebody claimed that's the England brothers and that's where they went. They went down there to hide out. And then they some family members claimed that when their mother died, that they went to the funeral and they were dressed up like women at their mother's funeral so they could be incognito. And the family members swear, yeah, they were there and they were dressed as women at the mother's funeral. And then they went back to uh, I can't remember where, where were they where that picture was taken, where they claim it was taken. Was it? Somewhere in South America. It was Brazil. Thanks, Bill. Yeah, it was Brazil. I think that's them. I do. I just think they got out. I really do. And then there was that other story about a guy that almost picked them up somewhere after they escaped from Alcatraz. And that, that story was always interesting. And then there was the letter that they that came out. What was the deal with the letter? The letter that was claimed it was written by one of the England brothers. I don't remember if it was Clarence or which England brother, but... Uh, they, the FBI found it years and years later, and it was claimed to be one of the England brothers. And they said, yeah, we made it. They said Frank Morris had, had, had you know, made it too, but he had since passed away and that uh, him and his brother did survive. I got to do a show on Alcatraz. I love that. That's one of my favorite mysteries too. Officer Collins tell, tells Brian not to touch. This is the same cop. I think I've seen this before, Dennis. This is the same cop who didn't think it was important at the time to include on the report that Cecilia had seen the killer's face. She saw his face from a long way away, though. I mean, I think all she would have known it was white. I know some people are really skeptical of Collins. I'm not sure why. I don't know what Collins would have to gain from making all that up, other than maybe when he's doing it for the documentary, if he wanted to be more interesting. I mean, other than that, I can't think of why Dave Collins would lie. Of course, I like Collins because... He got that height description from Cecilia, which puts Zodiac at seven feet. I mean, six feet. Sorry. Edit that out before a couple of my enemies put it on the Internet somewhere. You sent a message to Brian Hartnell a few weeks ago regarding Don Cheney's voice, but no reply. Um, He's not going to reply. I mean, he, he still gets a whole lot of uh, Brian still gets a whole lot of questions and inquiries about zodiac the only way to even try to reach him is through his son he's got two sons shoot um benjamin benjamin hartnell which still li he lives in the same area of his dad over there whatever they call that area like it's um yoma linda his wife uh, brian hartnell's wife was an anesthesiologist i don't know if she's retired yet or not of course brian's still a practicing attorney in that whole Riverside area. And uh, the only way that Brian ever agreed to do the stuff with the movie Zodiac in the documentary, this is the Zodiac speaking, was uh, his son Benjamin talked him into it because he knew who David Fincher was. Of course, Fincher's a big name, made a lot of big movies. And he said, hey, dad, this guy's for real. 
And then what Brian wanted, okay, okay, if he does a really good, uh, you know, recreation of the events. And, of course, Brian said that the, the recreation of Barry Essen was spot on. And he helped with it. He did help when describing it. Of course, he describes it in the documentary that was made with the film. But the only reason he ever did that was because uh, his son, Benjamin, Ben Hartnell, convinced him to do it. So all I can tell you, Searcher, is Ben Hartnell is – I actually have a cell phone number. I never called the dude. I do have a cell phone number. But I never, I never bothered him. But I would love to know if, because Cheney's voice is going to sound different. And of course, you're going to, if you play him, uh, Cheney's voice from his name was Arthur Lee Allen. It's not going to be, it's not going to sound like it did in September of 1969. It's just not. And, and in a way that I always say this is go listen to Hartnell's voice from This is the Zodiac speaking. And compare it to the one where he's in the hospital, where they interview him on the news after the attack at Berryessa, and tell me how much it sounds like the same guy. It sounds nothing like him, you know. It sounds and it's the same time gap, so he sounds nothing like his younger self. Hartnell doesn't. So Cheney would be the same, in my opinion. But what I would like to know, if I had an audience with Brian Hartnell, is lights just went out again. Weird. Is, uh if he could remember the draw because he thought he could remember the voice again, if he heard it, but, and he said it was a particular draw, but if he's ever heard a Bakersfield draw, because a Bakersfield draw is unique. It's, it's, it's something that's really only found around Kern Cali, Kern County, California and the way they pronounce stuff, because a lot of were, you know, they're uh, the descendants of the Okies that came over during the dust bowl, uh, 80, 90% of them were, were from the o Oklahoma and they had that kind of accent tied in with its own regional thing. So even when they went to places like Los Angeles, which wasn't that far from Bakersfield, they knew that they were from Bakersfield because they had a particular drawl or an accent. So that's what I would want to know if Brian Hartnell had ever been to Bakersfield, because I'm sure a lot of people there still have it, especially the older folks have a, what's called a Bakersfield draw or say certain words like they would in Bakersfield, California, which is not like you here in San Francisco. It's not like you here in LA. It's different. It's from what I know about it. It's, it's unique. So that's what I would want to know. Maybe listen to it and say, what, you know, do you pick up anything from this guy? Let us know. But remember Brian Hartnell, they did have Brian go to the ACE hardware and interact with Arthur Lee Allen. That's true. And he did not think that Arthur Lee Allen was the guy from Barry Essa. Just, you know, that's just what he said. He says, I don't think it was him. I mean, just interacting because, of course, Brian interacted with Zodiac. He had the mask on at that point, but he spoke to him. He saw how he moved. And the voice, of course, was important. And he did not think Arthur Lee Allen was Zodiac. And he makes that clear in the Riverside Lawyer magazine article. So that's what I would ask if I got a, <clears throat> any kind of audience with Brian. I'd say, have you ever been to Bakersfield? He's not too far away, maybe an hour and a half from where he lives in, in Redlands, California. Um, have you ever heard a Bakersfield accent? Did it sound like that? I mean, if I could just find a good example, that's what I would do. I know I just I went on a long rant there. But I wish I could. Uh... Stephen, if the cops freaked out when Brian tried to touch his car door, that tells us they are still deeply interested in the forensic evidentiary value and still interested in solving it. I hope so, Stephen. And I know I remember that right. Like they kind of like don't want to touch. <laughs> and uh, he's with uh, Sharon Paglin Hagen. I think she's just Sharon Hagen now, or Sharon Paglin. I think her name changed. Maybe she got divorced or something. But of course, she's in that scene with him at the Napa PD. And uh, she's also in. His name was Arthur Lee Allen. She's in both documentaries. But I think he's standing with her. And of course, they when they go out to the side at Berryessa, Bryant's describing the scene. And it was during that 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 part where he they show the car door and he tried to touch it because I think they brought it down because they have it stored up higher and they brought the car door down. I think he tried to touch it. And they're like, Ooh! <laughs> yeah, why not? Yeah, it's a long shot, but um, yeah, his his, his uh, voice is too different over the years. But yeah, Benjamin Benjamin is a uh, real estate broker in that area i can't remember the name of his brother brian's sons he's got two sons and benjamin is the one that got him into zodiac and i think outside of the riverside you can look this up on uh google it's the last time i think he's even mentioned zodiac and he talks about it in that article it's if you, if you google riverside lawyer and brian hartnell 
It's B R Y A N, by the way, not B R I A N. But if you want to find it, Brian Hartnell, B R Y A N Hartnell and Riverside Lawyer, that article will pop up. And that's the last time that I know that he's commented on the case. And you'll see what he says. Like he, he says that he doesn't think Zodiac would have left his fingerprints. He said he was he thought Zodiac was too smart. And he also thinks that, that we'll never solve it. He thinks Zodiac got away. Talked about this a while back on Messenger. I don't think Collins lied about anything, but uh it's not think mentioning she's seen his face in the report. Yeah, I agree. That's kind of weird. Yeah, I think maybe they all made some mistakes, but um uh, you know, there was some weird behavior. Look at uh What's his what's his face from uh, Blue Rock, the guy that wrote uh, shoot uh, Richard, who was the the cop from uh, Blue Rock Springs that rode with uh, Darlene in the ambulance. That was really strange. Jeff, based on your theories, do you think that Alan lived to officially be? I that that's still up for debate. Uh, do you think Alan lived to, that if Alan lived to be officially be charged for any Zodiac killings, he would have tried to bring Cheney down them? That's a good question. That's a great question, Jeff. Um, I don't know. That's fascinating. I like that. That's a great question. That's one worth worth contemplating. I think probably he would have. I think probably he would have if he was gonna if he knew he was gonna go down a hundred percent. He would have. I think he would. If, if he knew that it was, it was like no, no turning back. Cause I think at the beginning, he liked the attention. He probably agreed to it. That's why he was questioned so early on. Not why Alan was questioned in September of 69. I think he had planned on doing it with, that was part of the plan with Cheney. I think they tipped him off about himself. No, I think, I think he probably would have, I think he probably would have done it. Yeah, if he's got, yeah, why not? If he, if he was going to go totally go down, I think he probably would have done it. But yeah, try Benjamin Hart now. I might try him one of these days since I have a cell phone number. Because I was going to try to get him to do a podcast that I was doing. Yeah, Jennifer thinks they made it too. I do. I know you've been to Alcatraz. I've been there. Of course, I set my favorite movie, <laughs> my, my, uh, the spot where what that famous movie scene was done when the Clint Eastwood escaped from Alcatraz. No, I agree with that. Let me put this back up. Okay, there's Tony. There's Ned. Devil's Post Pile. Sierra Club. And then don't forget, check out Anthony's channel. But yeah, he came up with the same thing with the uh, with the wind. Devil's Post Pile is on the map. I don't know if there's a hole there or not. If there, but I would like to know if there was any pinholes in the in the map that came with it. Did Alan have a bump on his head? How do you know that? Was that in the autopsy? I never saw that. He might have. You know, he's on dialysis. I don't know, Bill. I don't know if I saw that. I might have if it was a while ago. I wonder if they speculated the guys made it. Of course you want to believe they made it. That's why I hate any D.B. Cooper theory where Cooper didn't doesn't make it. <laughs> I don't like him. Of course, I think it's Braden, but I don't like any D.B. Cooper theory where he, he dies in the jump. Because if he dies, it's just not as cool. D.B. Cooper's not as cool if he doesn't pull it off. I don't know. I don't know, Tony. Wherever you found that, let me know. That's interesting. He may have hit something. He may have just, you know, he had some kind of, uh, I think, a, you know, some kind of cardiac arrest or something. I mean, I know he was on uh, dialysis, and he was, I mean, he had a lot of health problems. Just making sure I didn't miss anything up here. But someone told me that they were, I heard con contradictory evidence, like going back to Michael Butterfield, he'll tell you that uh, the DA that would have presided over the case 
to bring charges against Arthur Lee Allen as the Zodiac was uh, the DA was Mike Nail, N-A-I-L. And he was the one that said that despite what you heard, there was no ever, there was never any physical evidence we could find on Allen. Of course, we don't know of any. And so nothing was, Im there was no imminent arrest of Arthur Lee Allen, but I've heard from someone else that's an insider uh, privately that that's not true, that uh, Vallejo PD was absolutely about to arrest Allen for the shooting at Blue Rock Springs Park. It's something I heard through the back channel through somebody that knows the people there and they said the Vallejo PD was going to make a move on Allen for Blue Rock. I don't know if that's true. I was told that by a fairly credible source, but uh, take it for what it's worth. Bull is also a Taurus and a Zodiac sign. Yes, that's true. I want to know more about that bump, Tony. Just making sure I didn't miss anything. I think that is about it. Jerome, thanks for staying up so late, my friend. And anybody that's up that late, if you're in uh, Europe or UK, Appreciate everybody staying up, Jerome, for sure. Good seeing all the regulars. Keith, I hope you're feeling better, my friend. Definitely I'll email you this week, Keith. Let's see. Make sure you're uh make sure you're doing better. You've gotten on the path to uh path to healthiness. Thank you, my friend. Dennis, let me get Dennis real quick. Have I been to any of the crime scenes? I walk around the corresponding thing at times would be spooky. Yeah, they would be. Of course, uh, when I filmed Myth of the Zodiac Killer, we filmed that in uh, Benicia in a house. The first part, the one where I'm wearing the coat. The part, if I'm wearing the tie, that's what we filmed in St. Louis because that's where Horan lived. And that's where I thought I laid down my best stuff, and they didn't air a lot of it. Uh, I think the best stuff that I put down on film was, I don't know if they ever make a third part of that it would be great if they used what I did in St. Louis. Cause it was in this creepy old warehouse. I guess it was some old beer manufacturing, whatever. And a cool part of St. Louis, a little further South. And uh, I know Horan knows it cause he filmed there too, but it was this creepy old warehouse. I'll actually put up some, some shots of uh, the, the, you know, the, uh, it was, I mean, spooky old warehouse. Of course, Zodiac has nothing to do with St. Louis, but when we filmed the first part of the show, it was out in Benicia. So I'm right there. I'm near Blue Rock. So I drove to Blue Rock Springs Park, of course. And then I went to Lake Herman Road and saw how close those were. I left Lake Herman Road and then I went to Blue Rock Springs. And I just was like, wow, man, these are like really bright on top of each other. But I didn't go at night. I wish I had gone to Lake Herman Road at night, which would have been really cool to see how dark it was. But I was so tired. Uh, I went to Arthur Leon's house. Uh, there was a couple, like I, maybe whoever the present owner of the house was up front. And I, I, I swear, I almost got out of the car and I did walk on the sidewalk in front of Allen's house at 32 Fresno Street in Vallejo. But there was a couple up there talking. I think one of them may have been the current owner. And I'm just like, can you let me into Arthur's old room? But I, and I was like, nah, I don't want to bug these people, <laughs> you know, but I didn't do it. Thank you, Lisa. But um, did go to Barry S. I should have, but I did go to Lake Herman Road, went to Allen's house and uh, Blue Rock. And that's that's the sites, the the uh, Zodiac sites I went to. Hey, Chris, it's a good show. The Cheney pipe wrench is interesting. Yes, that's a great find by Tony, especially with Cheney working with a pipe. Yes. Hey, Brian, how are you? Thanks, Jeff. Yeah, it'd be night would be freaky. I should have gone to uh, Lake Herman Road at night because I hear how it's pitch black. Yeah, it was cool. I got a lot of cool pictures from it. That's all I got for now. Everybody tune in next week at 8.30 p.m. Central, usual time. Everybody.